So in this video, we are going to look at a couple examples to figure out how to solve 4K, which is the rate constant, and determine its units. And that's the part we're gonna focus on um, in this video. So the first example we'll look at is consider the reaction between nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide. So it said the initial rate of the reaction is measured at several different concentrations of NO2 and CO, and the rate was measured. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out the rate law. So when I'm trying to figure out the rate law, I want to isolate a variable here. So I'm gonna focus first on NO2. I wanna look at two trials where NO2 changes, but CO doesn't change to isolate that any change in rate would have been due to NO2. So these first trials look like a good set because when I double my NO2 concentration, uh, my CO concentration has no change and my rate looks like it has multiplied by four. So because when this doubled, this multiplied by four, I know that the order due to NO2 is second order. Now I wanna figure out the order with CO. Oh my goodness. Sorry, spotty. I almost pulled my whole computer over. Anyways. <laughs> um, so we want to look at CO next and I look at these trials here and I see that my concentration has doubled and this concentration has stayed the same. So therefore trials two and three would be good to look at for this experiment. And when I notice when this doubles and this stays the same, my rate has no change. So therefore, rate is not affected by CO, and this would be zero order. So therefore, I can write my rate law as rate equals K multiplied by NO2 squared multiplied by CO to the zero. And then sometimes, we can just leave out CO to the zero because rate is not affected by that substance. And this is pretty much anything raised to the zero is just one. So the part that we wanna look at is determining the value and units for the rate law. So when I do that, you can just choose any trial uh, to get your data. So I'm just gonna use trial one because it's easiest. So I'm gonna plug in my values from trial run. So rate is 0 0.0021 equals K, which we're trying to solve for, multiplied by the concentration of NO2 in trial one, 0 0.10. Concentration is measured in molarity squared. So then what I would do is I would divide both sides by 0 0.10 um, squared. To solve for K. So K then would equal 0 0.0021 divided by 0 0.01 squared. So K is equal to 21. Now, the tricky part here is we wanna focus in on the units. So if I just look at my units here, I have molarity per second divided by molarity squared. I'm just gonna write this off to the side here. And so what I need to do is I need to simplify this unit. So to figure out what K is. So what I like to do is I like to use reciprocal fractions. So I put M squared divided by one 
and then I multiply by the reciprocal. So that means I flip the fraction. So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the reciprocal of m squared over one is one over m squared. And then I can cancel things out. So then I have m divided by s times m squared. One of these m's will cancel out. And so I'm left with one over molarity times seconds or molarity to the negative one seconds to the negative one. So either of those would be acceptable units for K. The other way that you can do this is to think about your equation, M divided by S is gonna be equal to K multiplied by molarity squared. So you can think about what would I have to multiply by so that when I multiply by, I get molarity divided by seconds. And so that's where I would need one molarity to cancel out. I also need a seconds on the bottom. So that's where you can see that I would need to take one over molarity times seconds to make that work. So this one overall was second order. So these are the units that you are likely to see for that. Okay, now let's take a look at the units for each of the orders of reactions. So the first one we have is zero order. Um, and so if we wanna figure out what the units on K are, I need to plug in my units for each substance here. So rate is most likely measured in molarity per second equals K. And when this one here, if I have any number raised to the zero or any unit raised to the zero, this is just a one. So there's actually just K multiplied by a one here. And so there are no other units to cancel out and the units on K are gonna be molarity per second if this is a zero order reaction. Let's look at first order. So in first order, my rate law would look like this. Rate equals K multiplied by A to the first. So let's plug in the units for each substance. Rate would be molarity per second equals K multiplied by, this would be molarity to the first, or just molarity, and then I need to solve for K. So I'm gonna divide both sides by M. Again, this is where I like to use reciprocal fractions. So I put M over one, and then I multiply by the flip. I think you call it flip and switch or flip and something, I'm not sure. Um, flip and switch it. So then when I look at that, molarities on the top and the bottom, I can easily see that, which cancels out. So the units left on K are one over seconds or seconds to the negative one. And second order, is rate equals K multiplied by A squared. Rate is again molarity per second equals K multiplied, this is molarity squared. So again, I'm solving for the units of K. I need to get K by itself. So I divide both sides by M squared. So that will cancel. And then I put this over one I flip it and switch it. And then I can see that my molarity on the top will cancel out with one on the bottom. And I will be left with the units of one over molarity times seconds or molarity negative one 
seconds, negative one. Now, you might say, I can just memorize these for zero first and second order, but it will be a lot easier to solve for them mathematically because while these are the three main orders, sometimes you can have more than one reactant. So maybe I have reactant A to the second and reaction B to the first. I would have to recalculate it because now my overall order is three. And so I can't rely on my memorization. Once again, I would have to solve for my units. See, every time you have to do your unit math because every time it could be different. So you always want to work on practicing this reciprocal math if that's what you're about. Because if I have something that's not one, zero, first, or second, you are unable to memorize it. So practice this unit math, getting familiar with it. If you are unsure how to use reciprocal fractions, uh, let me know. I think that is the easiest way to do it. So every time you solve for K, you also need to solve for the unit. Typically on questions, one point is for the number and one point is for the unit. So if you have any questions, please let me know.